Welcome again to ECTV Live, and I'm here with my co-host, David DeCosmo. David, we have a wonderful guest today, Jane Rissi, who's a community gardener, and people are interested in, in gardens and plants and growing yeah. and food. Uh, actually, uh, David, my, my, I have two law clerks, Stacey Harris, uh, Alex Kikura. They grow plants in their yard, and they grow food yeah. in their yard. I, Tell I, me about that. I do not have a green thumb. <laughs> I do not have a green thumb. I never claimed to have a green thumb. But I was very interested when I found out a couple of years back that a local group, I believe based out of a church, was talking about having a community garden. So, uh, Jane, uh, give us the history, first of all. What, what's, what's this all about? How did it get started? Uh, well, um, in 2002, it was started by um, J.P. Duncan. I don't know if you know. He's yes. a... Uh, pastor who um, got involved with, I think it comes from Drew University, um, the program, the Shalom Community Development, and um, so they wanted to start community gardens in the area and transform some, some poor neighborhood gardens, or actually empty lots, into gardens. So he, f he actually started on Prescott Avenue at a different property, and then we migrated to this property about three years ago on Irving and Vine. Well, when people think about having a garden, they don't think about urban areas. No. They think about the suburban areas and the farms. As a matter of fact, there is even a, a, a very successful community garden, if I'm not mistaken, up near uh, Clark Summit up in yes. the Abington. Yes, yes. Uh, but this one is smack dab in the middle of Scranton. Uh, and I know that you've got a website. You had a couple of... Uh, photos involved so this this is one of them is this your original site or the site uh, that's the second site uh, I became involved three years ago and I believe this was the first year um, that I started gardening in that site and then the next year I became manager so basically um, that's a, a shot early spring I believe before we started and uh, those are two of my friends and one gardener there she became a gardener um, so we have ten plots and they're fully rented. We, you know, it's a small fee based on income, and uh, for you know, people garden for different reasons. Well, how does it work? You know, if someone's just interested in gardening. They uh, they, a, they come uh, and see you, folks. Or? Yes, there's a big sign there with a phone number, um, and the phone gets forwarded to me. The call, and um, so you know, this year, well, last year we had a great group from the United Neighborhood Centers, Teens at Risk. They worked with us, and. Um, they helped volunteer and they grew food and it was a lot of fun. I liked those kids. They were they were great. Um, uh, they were what were they called? I think leaders in training. It was a great group of uh, young people. Here's my question, Jim. Yes. When when people, uh, I remember growing up. I'm half Italian and just a, my grandfather used to grow tomatoes mm -hmm. and he'd grow different things for us to actually eat. Do people uh, you you're involved with people growing like tomatoes and stuff like that? And they use them. Nothing tastes better than a fresh tomato on a salad, by the way. But uh, I Jane, agree. do people do it be because of that reason? They want to, They need the food to eat. Uh, it's various reasons. A lot of them do. I do. I gr I grow a lot of my own food. I start tomatoes from seeds myself um, and plant them every year. I save the seeds. Uh, it's different reasons for different people. For some people, it's to find community. We have a young man that just joined this year. He's a, um, he just left the Marine Corps. He just uh, finished his tour, and he moved back into the area, and he's going to go to Penn State, and uh, he wanted to meet people. Great guy. We had a, we had a lot of fun with him last week over there. Um, some people uh, freeze it and, and can the food. Some people donate the food. Uh, we, we often have excess, so we donate it to passerbys and, you know, people in the neighborhood. As a matter of fact, I, I recall mm -hmm. a year or two back, I think, that some of the community garden produce was actually given to uh, one or more of the, uh, the kitchens yes. in the area that serve uh, people who are in need. Yes, uh, that was probably before me, um, but this past, uh, the past two years we donated, you know, mostly to people walking by. I see, you know, women with uh, baby carriages and strollers and uh, or neighbors walking by, um, so we often just say, and we've planted produce on the outside of the fence for people to beans and uh, tomatoes so that you know kids in the neighborhood could come by and pick them uh, so yeah, that's, that's been nice that's that's great because I love something like that but actually what do you grow besides tomatoes and beans oh boy a lot of things beets carrots uh, chard lettuces um, different mixed greens collard greens um, peas beans 
you name it, uh, flowers, different flowers. And you're saying people could actually pick these up and they're donated to people? Uh, stuff that we plant on the outside, we do have a fence, and since people are paying for their plot, you know, it's up to the individual to decide what they want to do. But as a group, we usually are uh, quite generous, and uh, and I'd I'd love to find another property, you know, for another garden, for because we have a late a waiting list. Here's a, another photo that uh, I have from your website, uh, yep. and it looks as though things grew pretty well. <laughs> yes, that was the end of last year. That was probably November, um, and it was a it was. It was a tough year early on with all the rain. I know a lot of people had uh, tomato blight, but um, we, you know we did well. We all worked hard, and you know it paid off. We had a lot of produce there. You could see. I mean, well, and, and the photo almost answers my question because uh, it gets back to that urban versus suburban, and obviously you can grow a lot in in an urban area. That's my goal is what they call intensive planting. You know, so my goal in that garden is to teach people how to, you know, put a lot in and, and crowd it in. And as long as you have healthy soil and you have good practices, um, the soil can maintain it and it keeps the weeds down. We grew, we grew a ton of food. I mean, I was eating carrots and beets at, uh, in November and December from my garden. And uh, it, uh, my, it's very health, it's a very healthy thing to do. My, I, I know my law clerk, uh, told me that she does it because she's not, uh, she hasn't been feeling well sometimes and she likes to grow her own food. Yes. Tell me about the health benefits. Well, there's so much more nutrition in, um, we practice organic. It's not a certified organic, but uh, you know, it's, it's, we use compost and we use um, uh, natural amendments to, to amend the soil and the food you grow has so much more nutrition in it than uh, commercial farming. I mean, it's been proven through tests that you have uh, more nutrients um, in your produce. And you know what, David? Uh, you know, and I don't, I don't, I don't hide it that I've been ill myself recently. Yeah. And uh, I have a juicer, and I love to mm -hmm. get fresh fruit, and like carrots and celery, and put it in a juicer. Except my wife complains when she has to clean it. That's the only problem. <laughs> But uh, that's, the fresh fruit like that is healthy. People don't eat fruit the way they used to. No, they don't. In fact, I just planted a whole patch of strawberries there that we're going to just share. Um, and I'd like to put a maybe an apple tree or a peach tree on the outside to grow. Uh, but I think that juicing is, is an excellent way to, to get nutrition. And, uh, it's so what's what are missing. your fruits of choice? What, do you, what are you, uh, vegetables, what do you oh. eat? I, you know what, I, I go over there in the morning to water on my way to work and uh, I'll pull carrots and eat them for breakfast. You know, seriously, I, I, I salads, I you live on salads. I, I don't right now. I mostly eat them either raw or I cook them, saute them, grill them, you know, grill food. Okay. Um, trying you, to grow asparagus, but I'm having a, a tough time with that. Are you a vegetarian, Jane? Um, no, but I don't eat a whole, I don't buy or eat a whole lot of meat. I, it's limited. Enjoy it sometimes, but I, th uh, I think I love it's interesting food. too that uh, uh, even when I talk about some gardens, uh, I I know people will get various plants of of various sorts that they put in and start. They're actually midway grown already, but yes. you brought some other props along for us here. I want you to show them to okay. our camera, if you will, to. because you start <laughs> literally right from. I was going to say the see. ground up, right from below the ground up. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Um, sometimes from seed. We do a lot of planting from seed. I was out there in um, early April and I planted a lot of greens like lettuce, things that can handle a, a light frost um, and snap peas, for example. And so, you know, a lot of them are started from seeds. This I found recently, they had them up at, um, I think it was Lowe's, uh, seed strips, which make it easier planting strips. The seeds are on a long strip so that it makes it much easier for people to maintain rows and to plant so that your seeds don't blow away. Um, so those are a really nice thing. So you thing. just put the strip down in, into the ground. Yes, it's a, it's a long, these are a long strip. Uh, actually you tear this in half and you open it up and it's I think about eight feet. And um, so it helps you not to lose your seeds and maintain your rows. that particular your rows. one is, is carrots? These are carrots, yes, and I planted these uh, well, from already. The, well, how many carrots will, will grow from that one package oh, right there? Potentially, probably, what, I think they said there's several hundred seeds in here, okay. but you have to thin them so much that you don't get that many. You probably get 100 carrots. Wow. 
you know, this says 570. I'm in the mood for a carrot right now. <laughs> oh, they're, they're, there is nothing better than a fresh grown <laughs> carrot. Seriously, I'll, I'll make sure you get some right. this year now to this try would, them. This would suggest then that, that gardening, be it at a community garden center such as yours, uh, or in someone's backyard is not an expensive venture. It doesn't have to be. It really doesn't. You can start from seed. You do need to have the right place and the right light and heat. Mm -hmm. But even if you buy transplants and put them in, it's really not that expensive. Um, to join our garden, it's the most you'll pay is $50. And you know, basically, we ask people to put in 10 hours of community service um, to help clean up and help with the chores. Um, so they would work on not only their own, uh, their own particular patch, but they would help with general policing yes, the area. Exactly. And some chores on the outside, you know, trying to keep the neighborhood clean. And, you know, we'd like to get involved with a, a school group possibly or an organization with um, teens or young, young children to um, teach them about gardening practices and nutrition and health. I mean, there's so many reasons to community because gardening. Because that's important, because even David said before, when most people think about uh, gardening, they think about rural areas. Yep. But to get, yes. to get high school students involved, that's a great idea, Jane. I enjoyed it so much last year, so I'd love to get some more children in there. I, what struck me is there were their, their neighbors, their young children that came by, and they saw me with tomatoes, picking tomatoes, red tomatoes, and they thought they were apples. They had, you know, children have no idea where their food no. comes from. No. And the one group of teens last year when they were digging uh, with pitchforks and shovels, they saw worms and they thought they were snakes. And um, so they are so detached from where food comes from. I think it's really important that we, we get back to urban gardening and, and, and teaching children. Boy, that's, that's a really key point. I, my wife does some spinning. She'll, she mm -hmm. spins wool. And she was involved in a demonstration not too long ago up in, uh, up in the uh, Wayne County area okay. and had some uh, teenagers from New York come by and have a look at what they were doing. And one of the youngsters was giving her a very, very cruel look. And she wondered why the youngster was upset. And the youngster said, it's, it's such a shame that you people kill these animals to get this wool. They thought that they actually butchered the animals to get right. wool. So you're right. The, mm -hmm. Our education in terms of some basic needs of, of life is sometimes non-existent. What do you look for in terms of, of a place? Now, where are you located right now? Where's the garden? That's right? on the corner of North Irving and Vine Street uh, in the hill section of Scranton. It's about a block up from Mulberry and two down from Harrison. So it's fenced in. It's easy to find. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, what we look for is fairly level ground, um, you know, good deal of sun. You need six to eight hours of sun. Um, and you know it would be nice if it had a fence to keep some of the the, the rabbits out and and um, any sort of trespassers. But um, you know we haven't had any problems there. We've we've met so many nice neighbors. And I think that's the other part of it is meeting people and uh, you know from every walk of life. And and people the neighbors have been so good to us. They donate flowers sometimes and uh, drinks. They bring drinks over and uh, so. But we'd love to find another space. You know what, Jane? You get a sense of community when you do something like this. Like you said, the neighbors come around. Yes. That's a wonderful thing because you don't see that much anymore, yeah. David. The neighbors will you'll congregate, congregate, and you'll talk, and you'll have a little conversation about growing, growing vegetables. Yes. That's like it, it reminds me of going back to the '50s, which was my happiest time of my life, David. I mean, I love growing up in my little town of Jessup in the 50s. That's what it was all about. Mm -hmm. and well, and, and you recall in times gone by that uh, a backyard garden was a lot more common uh, than, uh, than they are now. And I think that really stems from World War II when they, uh, they had victory gardens. Yes, that's right. Uh, they yep. were gardens that people actually were encouraged to grow their own. Yes, I think uh, food was uh, in a shortage. And I believe um, my father and my grandfather had really terrific gardens. And that's how I started. So you're absolutely right about that. And I, I, there's just so much room in the city to garden. I notice plots and empty, empty lots all over. And I would love to find uh, another spot and, and maybe have several community gardens. Sure, sure. David, I'm going to, uh, it's uh, almost 20. You're going to go plant I, now? I, I have to, David, I'm, <laughs> he, Jane, he I'm not, so I'm not walking out. about right. this. Jane, I'm not walking out on you. I have another event. Okay. Actually, I want to say on the rec, uh, on the, in, on TV, Judge uh, Thomas Vanassi is getting sworn in to the Federal Court of Appeals, oh. and we're very proud of him. I have to go to that event. 
After which you're planting your carrots. After yes. that, I'm no. After that, I'm going to call Jean up and say, "Can I have a dozen carrots? <laughs> I'll pay it for them." Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your you. Honor. Very, very nice. Thank you. Now, uh, as we say uh, goodbye to our colleague for the moment, I'm going to get into another factor here because we talked about this not being expensive in terms of financial input, uh, but there is some uh, man hours <laughs> that has to yes. go into something like this, and this is a photo of just one of the folks who uh, has worked on the garden. So it, it does take a little bit of elbow grease, doesn't it? it yes, elbow, elbow grease and, and getting dirty and, you know, some long hours. But it's I never regret it. And uh, there Rudy is, uh, he's putting in, I think he's putting in some plants in that photo. Uh, it definitely takes some work, um, but it's it all pays off. The more work, the better your garden turns out. Uh, I ask you about how people might get involved in the community garden, but undoubtedly there are some listening uh, and watching that are interested in just having their own. And you are, yes. you've just become a master gardener. Yes, I did. How does somebody start? Somebody who's watching us right now, interested in doing something in their own backyard, what's the first thing they've got to do? Well, if they, if they really don't know and they want some help, they could call the uh, Penn State Cooperative Extension Office and get some help there. I mean, we have master gardeners that would be happy to give some advice but basically there are books and you can find everything on the internet nowadays on gardening and um, but I would say start small don't don't dig too big of a plot that you can't manage your first year start small and grow it um, there are some and, and probably start with transplants don't don't do too much with seeds because you may not they may dry out or you may not take care of them well enough in the beginning so, so it's best to start, for instance, and, and the judge had mentioned tomatoes, a yes. uh, popular uh, produce in, in our area. And I gather the soil around here is, is pretty good for, Very for tomatoes. Good. Very good. So you would suggest they get a plant. Yes. And just actually transplant that from where they buy it into their, into their yard. Yes, exactly. Uh, starting after May 15th, you can do that with most summer produce. Um, right now it's, it's too chilly for tomatoes and peppers and eggplants and those kind of things. Right now you could plant um, beans, no, I'm sorry, peas and greens, lettuces, beets and carrots, and they'd probably be safe right now. Um, yeah. Well, that was one of my questions because a lot of people uh, say, don't put anything in the ground until after Memorial Day. That's right, yeah, to be safest, it's after Memorial Day. It was, it was mighty cold last night, so if you had tomatoes in, I don't think they would have made it last night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we're, so. we're live today and have a, a fair temperature, but again, tonight it's going to go cold. Of course, people will be watching this throughout the week as we do replays mm -hmm. of the program, and probably by the time the last of these shows airs, they can start putting their, <laughs> their crops yes. in, as it were. Yes. Do they need a lot of space? How, uh, eight by uh, ten? Uh, yeah, I would start with, that's a perfect size to start with, like about an eight by ten. I mean, basically a tomato takes, you, you, you plant tomatoes about two feet apart. Um, so you do need some room. Uh, but, you know, what's nice is you could also plant lettuce in between or basil or some herbs. It's very good to companion plant like that. It keeps the soil moist and um, keeps the weeds down. That's how I do it, and use mulch on top. Um, so basically, an eight by ten would be a great starting point for someone. And if you have success and enjoy it, you know, grow it next year. So, and Jane, how much attention does a, a backyard garden require? Do you have to be out there every single day, weeding, uh, watering? Um, probably not every day, but I would say basically every other day you should at least check it out, and you might need to water. Now this week it's been raining, so you wouldn't need to water, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't really need to give it a whole lot of attention. But early on, I would say it takes the most work, and then if you put in the work early on and you, you have your plants well established and you have some mulch down on top to keep them moist and the, and the weeds down, you know, really you could water once a week sometimes. As far as the community uh, garden mm -hmm. center itself, and here's another photo of another one of your, yes. your folks that... Uh, puts in uh, their time. <laughs> yes, in fact, she helped uh, weed whack the entire outside of the property this week. So she's a volunteer. She's a, a great support. 
Can you use more volunteers at your existing uh, uh, community garden? Uh, we'd be willing to, uh, sure, and and we'd be willing to teach people if if um, you know if there were people that needed to wanted to learn about gardening, we'd be happy to to teach them. They could contact me. Um, but, How do yeah. they do that, Jane? Uh, um, there is a number on the garden site, um, or they could email. Uh, I have an email address that we use. It's Shalom CDC at yahoo.com. And would you spell that out for us? Yes, them? it's S H A L O M C D C at yahoo.com. And um, the name of the organization, the parent organization, is the Shalom Community Development Organization. And in this case, uh, the word shalom means wholeness and peace, and it's, it's what you know, we hope to do in the neighborhood. So. And you say that you would like to expand, you'd like to get more. So uh, where do we start with the search for more? You, again, you'd like them in the city or in, in local community. Yes, I think that's ideal because then people see it and they, can, they ask questions and they, and they learn. So um, I, you know, personally, I'm, I'm in the hill section, so I would love something in the hill section or you know, in the city or possibly south side just for convenience sake but we're willing to check out any location um, to put in a community garden or if there was a church group interested or you know a nonprofit organization interested we could maybe par possibly partner with them and you know and since you're gardening. talking about a shared operation yes. you have to have a little bit more space so what yes. kind of uh, size well in that case like this particular property is a 50 by 80 um, and that's a nice size um, I, to, to you know and, and again that's 10 people so something like that would work well um, and, and do you depend a lot on volunteers you did mention uh, um, we have a cleanup day and then uh, other times there are personal friends of mine or other gardeners that come and help with things like painting we have a shed that they paint or grass cutting uh, in the winter we clear the snow you know off the sidewalks things like that try to be a good neighbor so those kind of activities. Now we, we try to keep everything here on a very positive note, but you have to face reality. Reality today is that uh, the economic conditions are not the best. Um, I guess one might think this would be an excellent time for people to start thinking, whether it be at the community garden level or out in that backyard. Yes. This might be a very prudent move for a lot of families. I couldn't agree with you more. I, I've saved a lot of money. I mean, I, I may spend you know, 20 or $30 early in the spring on transplants and seeds. And I basically don't go to the grocery store other than, you know, for rice or pasta, you know, a few staples if I want to buy meat or fish. But basically I eat from the garden until November, sometimes December. From, from uh, October roughly? Or? Uh, yes, no, I mean, I'm probably an extremist in that I, I don't mind going down and covering things when I need to. And in the fall, I grow a lot of greens that can handle a, a light frost. So, you know, then I eat salads and sautéed greens and things like that. Or pull up beets and carrots, potatoes. So, yeah, I, I've saved a lot of money. And, you know, it's just healthy and I enjoy it. I've met great people. If you've got the land then, again, we're talking backyard rather than the community garden. If you've got the land, could you start a garden with 5 or $10? You certainly could, yeah. It could be a small garden, but absolutely. I, that, in fact, that would be a great way to start. And conceivably, hypothetically, how much worth uh, money's worth of produce could you? Oh boy, that's interesting. I don't have that math figured out in my <laughs> head, but uh, I mean, when you think about it, look how expensive tomatoes are in the in the supermarket right now, and they're all basically import imported from either out of the country or California. So if you can if you can grow your own produce, tomatoes are three or four dollars a pound. I bet you right now, and they don't taste very good. <laughs> You know, local tomatoes are delicious. Well, you mentioned several successful local crops. <laughs> Let me ask you this. <laughs> what should you not attempt to be growing in, in this area? Oh, yeah, tropical things, obviously. Uh, we have, a, you know, about a four or five month growing period. So, you know, of hot summer for summer produce. But you can, you know, you can plant, like I said, peas in the spring, in the fall. Um, beans grow all summer and they're very easy to grow, very inexpensive as long as they have something to trellis, or they have bush beans now, so you don't need a trellis. Um, flowers, if you're into flowers. 
Um, so what's, what's the advantage of getting together in the <coughs> community setting like this as opposed to having your own backyard garden? Um, for me, it's, it's, you get support. Um, you teach each other things. I've learned from the other gardeners. And, You're a master uh, gardener, but you've learned from others. Yes. Um, you know, you, as a master gardener, you mostly learn how to find the answers and where to find the answers. So, um, but to learn, you learn from doing. Each year you get better. And, uh, you know, really just building community and learn, you know, meeting people. Uh, it's fun. The, yet last Friday we spent until after dark hanging out at the garden, talking, telling stories, and and then uh, one of the gardeners went home and made us dinner. So you know, strangers that ha she had never met before. So you know, it's great for community building. And I think the probably the one stumbling block of people getting involved either in community or in their own backyard is something we touched on before, and that's the idea of they don't know where to start, they don't know how to start. But yes. you say there's plenty of plenty of answers available for yes. them free of charge free of charge at uh, the master gardeners uh, helpline free of charge and um, obviously if I if I had the time I'd be glad to help people um, or we could partner with an organization and make it official and mentor them we are um, oh no that's the master gardeners uh, we're, met, we're working with a church in West Scranton putting in three gardens I believe it's next week and I was designing their their garden beds last night that's what I was so there are new gardens going to go in uh, Absolutely. shortly. Yes, uh, Dorothy Street Church. I, I forget the name, but um, uh, Penn State Master Gardeners are partnering with several ch uh, groups putting in community gardens. And that then might be another way for an individual to get started in terms of a community garden by going to his or her church or yes. civic organization and discussing this as a possible uh, uh, project which could certainly yield some very exciting results and, and productive results. That's a, that's a great idea. I would I would encourage people if they were interested, you know, and go to their churches or their civic groups, especially if they have some land already and it's and if it's just grass, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't take that much to to put in a few garden beds, like you said some some work. Um, you know, if you're going to get big at it, then a fence would be nice. You know, and access to water. So those are the three three things you need besides sun. <laughs> and there's enough here to to have a success, obviously. Yes. Uh, I don't know how to uh, measure or rate the amount of produce that you got last year, but it certainly looked extremely oh, successful. There was uh, you know, many, many, probably hundreds of pounds of produce. Uh, one guy this year says he's going to grow only sweet potatoes in his patch, and I imagine he'll have probably uh, probably over a couple hundred pounds, I would guess. In a community you know. garden, unlike a, a farm setting, uh, uh, we know in a farm, uh, a farm will have one crop one year and then they'll, they'll take that crop out, put something else in. Yes. Can you do that or should you do that in a community garden or can you always go with the same? Uh, it's best to rotate. Uh, I rotate from, you know, maybe one end of the garden to the other uh, with, uh, depending on what family the crops are in. And in the winter, the fall and the winter, I put in a cover crop. Uh, we used winter rye this year in our garden and that, uh, basically, that puts nitrogen back into the soil so that we don't have to put in, you know, heavy fertilizer. And uh, so that's another way of amending the soil and s s supplementing it. Uh, but ba yes, basically you should rotate. You know, tomatoes shouldn't grow in the same spot year after year after year. Well, I, I think it's important, again, that we touch on how someone might get involved in a community garden. Uh, so before we sign off for this week's program, tell us if they are interested in joining your organization now or if perhaps even more importantly they have a site that might lend itself toward a new community garden where several people can get together. How do they get a hold of your organization to begin? Okay. Um Probably either you can you could call me directly. Can I give you my Absolutely, phone number? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. My my phone number is five seven zero three five one one eight two two, and um, or email like I said earlier, shalom cdc at yahoo dot com. Um, uh, you could I, I guess those are the two best ways to to reach us. Uh, if you drive by our community garden, there's a sign there with a phone number. Also, I don't have the phone number in my head of the, um, uh, the Shalom's office number. I right, should, so but I don't. Let's give yours one more time. Then. Yes, it's 570-351-1822.
Well, Jane Rissey from Community Gardens, I, I thank you for joining us today. Uh, this is something to think about, and I would love to see it expand in our area and really help a lot of people out in many ways, nutritionally, and I think even just feeling good about themselves yes. and having worked with the soil and produced something. I, I agree, and I appreciate this opportunity. Opportunity. It was great being here. Glad to have you with yep. us. And on behalf of my co-host, Judge Tom Munley, who had to leave us a little early today for an appointment, I'm David DiCosmo. The program is ECTV Live, and we will see you again next week.